from the News Channel 5 Network. This is Sportsline. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Sportsline. John Burton with you until the top of the hour. Please excuse the voice going through a little... Uh, as the as the weather changes, so does my voice normally, but uh, happy to be with you. Hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving, and of course, happy holidays to everybody out there. Talking sports for the next hour. Coming up next segment, John Glennon, Titans beat writer for the tennis scene, will join us. We'll talk about the two-tone blue as they get ready to host the Jacksonville Jaguars this Sunday at Nissan Stadium, a 12 noon kickoff. You can see it over on News Channel 5. Um, of course, uh, the last time the Titans won a home game, they, they're riding an 11-game home losing streak. The last time the team they beat at home was the Jacksonville Jaguars. And, of course, this is a rematch from a game a couple of weeks ago on the 19th of November, right before Thanksgiving. A Thursday night football game, the Titans lost 19-13 to in Jacksonville, a game where the Titans really uh, played well for the most part but kind of fell apart in the fourth quarter. Uh, talked to some players about that. And uh, a couple of guys have a little payback on their minds as they get ready to face the Jaguars again. So we'll get to some Titans interviews later on the show. We'll hear from Marcus Mariota, Mike Malarkey, um, several players as we uh, dive in. And it brings up an interesting topic, Titans fans. Not sure what the future of this football team is. Not sure if the front office will uh, take the interim t tag off of Mike Malarkey and make him the... Uh, head coach going forward. Uh, I'm sure it'll all depend on these last five games, how they play and how they finish. Assuming, though, that Mike Malarkey will not be the head coach next year, who would you like to see be your head coach of the Tennessee Titans? You can give us a call at 737-7767. And let me stop some of you right here. Jeff Fisher's not coming back, okay? It's not happening. So... Uh, if, if Jeff Fisher's who you want, give me a good reason why. You can call me and tell me why, but it's probably not going to happen. Is it John Gruden? Can you, can you lure John Gruden out of the Monday Night Football booth to come coach this football team? Might be a little bit intriguing for him, working with Marcus Mariota. And another question, do you want the Titans to win as many games as they can between now and the end of the season for pride? Or would you rather see them lose out and get the number one overall pick? Because what's interesting there is that if the Titans are able to get the number one draft pick, they could parlay that into a trade where they could stockpile draft picks. Because let's face it, teams near the top of the draft usually need a quarterback. Titans are set at quarterback. They have Marcus Mariota. So if they get that number one slot, they might be able to trade out of that pick, get some players, and obviously stockpile more draft picks. So. A couple of topics for you to chew on if you'd like to call up and uh, talk about that. We'd uh, accommodate you here at 737-7767. Meantime, we have to uh, pay tribute and homage to a true college football coaching legend. Watson Brown stepping down today as head coach of Tennessee Tech. 31-year head coaching career. Had stops at Austin P, Cincinnati, Rice, Vanderbilt, UAB. What a career he's had, 131 career wins as a head coach. Won a share of the uh, OVC title with Tennessee Tech uh, back in 2011. Of course, the brother of uh, former Texas coach Mac Brown, a true legend and a true gentleman. And, you know, some of the reasons he gave for stepping down were pretty honest today. Uh, he feels like the Tech program is, uh, is in good hands. It's in good shape in terms of recruits, in terms of players. And he just felt like he wasn't the guy to lead it anymore, and he's stepping down. So we wish Watson Brown the best. Um, certainly a legend in these parts and a, 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 a wonderful coach and a great gentleman. Who do we have on line one? I'm sorry. We have Lewis on line one. Lewis, you're the first call tonight. Good evening. Yes, how are you doing? Good, man. What's up? I just want to tell you, uh, Kyra, my, you and I enjoy you every Sunday night now through the, through the week. Appreciate that. And I just want to say, uh, Watson Brown, he was a real good coach. And he did a lot. He did a lot. And uh, I just want to say that uh, it's, you know, the Titans have a little difficulty, but I got confidence in them. They probably most likely come back and 
and I like the quarterback they got. Yeah. So you'd like to see Malarkey back next year? Yeah. Would you like to see them try to win as many games as they can these last five, or I don't want to say tank it, but uh, maybe lose out and get the number one overall pick? Yes, I, yeah, I'd like, like to see that, but I just want to tell you, uh, I enjoy you uh, all through the week and through Sunday night. You do, do a great job. I uh, try to watch you all the time. Appreciate that. I really do. I appreciate the call, and thank you so much, and uh, happy holidays. All right, let's go to uh, Paul on line two. Paul, good evening. You're on Sportsline. Oh, God, brother. You know what? You better not sleep on Florida. I'm just telling you. Oh, man, come on. I'm just telling you. All right. Them rascals. Anyway. All right. We need Jim Harbaugh up here to coach. And we need to go on and lose out so we can get Derrick Henry out of Alabama. Okay, well, let's let's address your first point first. You, you realize what it's going to take to get Jim Harbaugh away from Michigan after one year. You're going to have to back up the Brinks truck, number one. Number two, you're probably going to have to give him an ownership stake in the team. And probably fire Rustin Webster and make him director of football operations and general manager. You willing to do all that? Oh, no. I didn't know all that, but no. He can fire that gun team up and get them right. Well, I'm telling you, Jim Harbaugh's got a good thing going at Michigan. And he had a pretty good first season. And it's only going to get better once his recruits come in. So you're really, really going to have to uh, make it enticing for him to leave Ann Arbor, Michigan. I'm sure he'd leave for the pros again, though. It may not be this year, but he's coming back to the pros. All right, so you're saying Derrick Henry is the answer to all of the Titans' woes. It's to the running woes, yes, sir. Mm. Well, here's the thing about Derrick Henry. He's not a really exciting player, but behind a good offensive line, obviously, he can grind out the yard. I mean, the guy carried 46 times last week. You can't do that in the NFL. He, he, won't, he won't last three years carrying the ball that much. Oh, well, I know, but he'll have some backup here in the NFL, you know. Well, well he had his, his backup down there go, you know, get hurt, broke his arm, so... That's why he's having to carry the ball so much, which kind of scares me for Alabama next year, but that's a different story. Yes, it is a different story. All right, we will see what happens. Of course, the SEC championship game between Florida and Alabama over on News Channel 5 Saturday afternoon. We look forward to it. Paul, I'm just telling you, don't sleep on the Gators. You're probably going to win the game. You're, you're fine, but don't take the Gators lightly. It, I'm, I'm telling you, stranger though. things have happened, Paul, and we appreciate the call. Thanks so much. All right, leaves the line open, 737-7767. Again, we're asking Titans fans two questions. Do you want – well, actually three questions. Do you want Mike Malarkey back as head coach next year? Um, if not, who is the coach you would like to see as for the Tennessee Titans next year? And do you want the Titans to try to win as many games as they can these last five games or – tank it – and go for the number one draft pick next year, which you could use to trade out of and stockpile draft picks and bring in more talent. So those are three questions on the table. Again, we're going to talk to uh, John Glennon of the Tennessean next segment. John, of course, covers the Titans. I've uh, been doing it for a long time and a uh, good friend of the show. Meanwhile, turning to hockey, last night the uh, Predators kind of broke out of their goal-scoring slump. Nice 5-2 to two home win over the Arizona Coyotes. I was at that game. Uh, great energy from the crowd. And, you know, the, the, the Predators trailed 2-1 going into the third period. And you're thinking, oh, no, here we go again. But they explode for four goals, two of them by Philip Forsberg. And, um, you know, teams go through these slumps, whether you're a baseball team, you know, the lineup's not hitting. Whether you're a basketball team, the team collectively isn't shooting well. And it's the same in hockey. You know, they're putting a lot of shots on net lately, and very few are finding the net. But uh, last night, of course, uh, getting the five goals, getting the win, and head coach Peter Laviolette certainly happy with what he saw. I, I agree. You know, it's, uh, it can be frustrating when you're, when you're playing like that and you're not getting the results that you're looking for. So I was really happy that we stayed with it. We didn't get frustrated. We didn't start taking penalties and just kept our eye on the ball for 60 minutes. It was a, it was a real solid 60. 
Did you see that sense of urgency that you may not have seen on, on Saturday that you were speaking of this morning? Yeah, from start to finish. Guys were, you know, somebody, somebody had mentioned the players and how will they respond and, you know, leaders in the room. And I had mentioned this morning that those, those guys will probably be the best players on the ice. And that's typically what happens here. So um, our, our group was, was ready to, to go from the start. And, um, you know, it started with Shea and went through Fish and Pex and everybody else right from there. What was the key to sort of getting through without Fisher when he went out? You know, guys jumped around quite a bit. We were juggling the lineup. Yarny had a, a real good game. He started uh, on the wing with Ribeiro, and then he moved to the center for Mike. And Colton Sisson got more ice time and more responsibility. And Arvidsson had a heck of a game coming in here. I thought he was outstanding. So, you know, the guys that um, got called up and put into the lineup, they, they adjusted and we juggled and managed. But certainly I think losing Mike is always tough. Is there any update on his condition? No update. No update. Externally, meaning just outside of yourself and the coaching staff in the locker room, is Kelly Yarncrock a player that doesn't get enough recognition for the things he does on a game to game basis? I mean, he's a he's a smart player. I, I've I've always we've always talked about Kelly as being one of the smarter players. Um, just reads and uh, always in position, doing the right things on the ice systematically. Um, but he's got he's got upside potential offensively too. And tonight was a chance for him to jump on the power play, scored a big goal for us. Um, you know, jump back in center and move up the lineup and take on more minutes. And you know, he was terrific. Forsberg sort of symptomatic in this team too, maybe played better than his goal numbers would suggest this season. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's, don't get me wrong. There's, I'm, I'm, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, just paint everything with one brush. There's games, generally speaking, where our team could have played better, and they're an honest group. They'd tell you the same thing. Um, but there's games where we just snake bit. Phillips, one of those guys, you know, he'd walk out of there with eight, six shots on net and 11 attempts and, and not get anything to bounce for him. So, you know, tonight he, he was real strong in his game. And, um, you know, like you said, to start it all off, <clears throat> things dropped for us in the third period. Head coach Peter Laviolette of the Nashville Predators after last night's 5-2 win of the Arizona Coyotes. Preds back in action uh, back at Bridgestone Arena. Uh, tomorrow night as they continue their homestand. And again, um, looks like hopefully their goal-scoring drought uh, that plagued them on their recently concluded road trip uh, is over, at least for the time being. Of course, uh, they return home Saturday. Only were able to get one goal in a 4-1 loss to the Buffalo Sabres. But uh, they got the Florida Panthers coming up tomorrow night back at uh, Bridgestone Arena as they look to make it two straight home wins. And uh, the Predators have been really good at home so far this season. Uh, only two regulation losses and two overtime losses uh, up against, I believe, nine wins. So uh, you hope that trend continues uh, for the blue and gold as they uh, get through the December part of their schedule. Um, obviously, they are well into their season. Uh, certainly, uh, something we'll keep an eye on. Mike Fisher injuring a, a, his a low, suffering a lower body injury last night, had to leave the ice uh, early in the game. So hopefully not too serious. He can get back with the team soon. All right, up next, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back and talk with John Glennon of the Tennessee, and we'll talk Titans plus your phone calls. Stay with us.